Life in the UK 2012 provides a unique overview of well-being in the UK today. The report is the first snapshot of life in the UK to be delivered by the Measuring National Wellbeing Programme and will be updated and published annually. Wellbeing is discussed in terms of the economy, people and the environment. Information such as the unemployment rate or number of crimes against the person are presented alongside data on people's thoughts and feelings, for example, satisfaction with our jobs or leisure time and fear of crime. Together, a richer picture on how society is doing is provided. President Trump has warned Turkey's President Erdogan that foreign interference is complicating the situation in Libya. It comes after Turkey MPs approved a bill, allowing the military to be deployed to interfere in Libya's civil war in support of the UN-backed government in Tripoli. The United States is to ban a number of popular e-cigarette flavors to the rising use of vaping products among teenagers. However, menthol and tobacco flavors will be allowed to remain on the market and large refillable vaping devices are completely exempt from the ban. The Democratic Republic of the Congo will hold an election in December, hopefully leading to a peaceful democratic transfer of power for the first time in the country's history. Sitting President Joseph Kabila came to power in 2001, having succeeded his father, Laurent Désiré Kabila, after his assassination. Joseph Kabila was elected as president in 2006 for a five-year term, and re-elected in 2011. Though his second term ended in 2016 and the DRC constitution prevents him from seeking a third term, elections were not held and Kabila reminder in power. might sound obvious that if you want to improve a robot's software, you should improve its software. Agram Gupta of Stanford University, however, begs to differ. He thinks you can also improve a robot's software by improving its hardware.
that is, by letting the hardware adapt itself to the software's capabilities. As they describe in Nature Communications, he and his colleagues have devised a way of testing this idea. In doing so, they have brought to robotics the principles of evolution by natural selection. They also cast the spotlight on an evolutionary idea that dates from the 1890s, but which has hitherto proved hard to demonstrate. European market is a tough terrain for food deliberate firms. Delivery Hero has had a good traditional in the past couple of years. In August 2020 it ascended to the DAX, the stock market index of Germany's most unvaluable listed firms. It is present in 50 countries on four continents. Revenue for the third quarter was 1.8 billion euros, 2 billion dollars, a jump of 89% compare with the same period in 2020. We grew 100% before Corona, 100% during Corona and we will grow 100% after Corona, says Niklas Ostberg, the Berlin-based firm's Swedish chief executive. By number of orders delivery hero is more than twice as big as DoorDash, its large American rival. On August 4, explosives aboard two drones flying near Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro as he spoke in Caracas were detonated. Seven people were injured. Maduro has used the incident as a pretext to crack down on Venezuela's opposition by unleashing the regime's secret police. State Department spokesperson Heather Nowat said, the United States condemns the political violence that occurred on August 4 and urges the Maduro regime to respect the rule of law, exercise restraint, and safeguard the presumption of innocence for all accused. High staff churn is here to stay. Retention strategies require a rethink. In the not-so-distant past, bosses did not have to worry as much about their workforces. Newcomers could absorb the corporate culture osmotically. Workers' families were invisible, not constantly interrupting Zoom calls. Employees had a job, not a voice. Now firms have to be intentional. Management speak for thinking. About everything from the point of the office to how staff communicate with each other. Retention is the latest area to require attention. The spike in staff departures known as the Great Resignation is centered on America. A record 3% of the workforce there quit their jobs in September. President Trump has reluctantly signed into law a congressional bill imposing sanctions on Russia over its policy in Ukraine and alleged meddling in last year's U.S. presidential election. 
Afterwards, he called the legislation seriously flawed, saying it encroached in his powers to negotiate foreign policy and hurt the interests of European allies. The company that provided the Venezuelan voting system for the controversial constituent assembly elections says the turnout figure was inflated by at least 1 million. The Speaker of the Opposition-Controlled National Assembly called on prosecutors to open a criminal investigation immediately. Executive Vice President of the U.S. Government's Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, David Bohigian and other U.S. government officials traveled to Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia in August to promote U.S. investment in those countries. OPIC is the U.S. government's development finance institution. It mobilizes private capital to help address critical development challenges and in doing so, advances U.S. foreign policy and national security priorities. On August 14, the U.S. delegation met with Armenian Minister of Economic Development and Investments Arts Vikmanasian. Barred owls can be found in dense forests right across North America. They feed on small mammals, fish, birds and small reptiles, pretty much anything that comes their way. The barred owl grows up to half a meter tall and has emerged as a very adaptable nocturnal predator. Whereas they have been long thought to live in old-growth forests, they are now building up quite an urban population. In Charlottes, North Carolina, Barred owls tend to nest in the cavities of the numerous willow oak trees that line the city's streets. Far from being endangered, the owls have expanded their range, and now, in some places, conservationists are worried about the effects they might have on other native species. Almost everyone has heard of the London Stock Exchange, but relatively few know anything about the London Metal and Commodity Exchanges. Yet these markets have a greater influence on world economies because they set global prices for some of the essential raw materials for industry and food manufacture. The LME provides three basic services to the world's non-ferrous metal trade. First, it is a market where large or small quantities of metal of a guaranteed minimum standard can be bought and sold on specific trading days. Second, it acts as a barometer of world metal prices. And third, it is a hedging medium. That is, it can help traders get some protection from price fluctuations that occur for economic, political or financial reasons. An important question about education is, then, why do some types of students achieve success easily and others struggle to do well? Well, one theory is that there is a genetic reason for academic achievement. What I mean by that is, a certain innate, measurable level of intelligence. Another frequently discussed theory is environmental factors, such as the effect of home and family upbringing. A final reason is related to the teaching and learning process within educational institutions, and the way it is organized, administered and assessed. I'd recommend that you all try to get hold of English in the Southern Hemisphere by Nallon and Watts, as this provides an excellent overview of the topics that we're going to be covering in this module. It's really our primary text.
It has particularly strong sections on the history of English in Australia and New Zealand, examining in some depth how the language has developed in these countries. The sections on phonology and on vocabulary will be invaluable when you're doing the written assignment, which I'm going to be telling you about in a moment once I've given you the details of a couple of other essential references.